I'm of the mindset that when things are made easy, that they're much more likely to get done. And now there's an update to the OpenPS2 loader software that will let you use any size of XFAT formatted hard drive with your PlayStation 2, making it faster and easier than ever to play the games you love in just a matter of minutes. Stick around, you're about to learn something new. Along with your fat model PlayStation 2, you'll need a few extra items for this to work. I have all of these linked in the video description for you. First, you'll need a free McBoot memory card. You'll need a USB flash drive to be able to copy an updated version of OPL to that free McBoot memory card. I like these ultra-fit drives from SanDisk for their size, speed, reliability, and value. You'll need a hard drive, and I like these Western Digital Blue drives. They're fast, reliable, and a great value for the price. You'll need a SATA to PS2 hard drive adapter like this Geek one shown here. And you'll need a SATA to USB hard drive adapter like this Wii Me branded one shown here. I've been using this one for several years now, and it's fantastic. There's one required and one recommended piece of software you'll need to download. I have them both linked for you in the video description. The first piece of software is the latest release for OPL. Scroll down on this GitHub page to the Assets section and click on it. From here, download the zip file with the latest beta version of OPL shown here. It's optional, but I recommend that you also download the GUI format software so that you can easily format high-capacity USB volumes in FAT32 format. Click the large image in the center of this page to download the software to your computer. Let's get your USB storage drive formatted in FAT32 format. Insert your USB drive into your computer. Take a moment to make note of the drive letter assigned to your USB storage device by Windows. You'll need this in just a moment. Close out the File Explorer window for your USB storage device. Navigate to your Downloads folder and double-click on GUI Format. Then at the UAC pop-up window, click Yes to continue. Important note here, before you start using GUI Format, make sure you close out any open instances of File Explorer, otherwise the application will not work correctly. Take a look at the top left corner of the GUI Format window. You'll need to make sure that the proper drive letter is selected here. Click the drive letter to see the drop-down menu with the list of drive choices for your computer. Then select a drive letter that represents your USB storage. Once you've confirmed you have the right drive letter selected, click Start near the bottom right corner of the window to continue. Then at the confirmation prompt that appears, click on OK to format your USB storage device in FAT32 format. Once the formatting process is complete, you're done with GUI format. Click Close in the bottom right corner of the window to close out the software. Back at your Downloads folder in File Explorer, you can either archive GUI format somewhere on your computer for future use, or just delete it out of your Downloads folder if you already have it archived like I do. Next up, let's get OPL copied over to your USB storage device. You'll need to extract the OPL zip file in your Downloads folder. Once you have it extracted, you can delete it out of your Downloads folder to keep your Downloads folder squeaky clean. Double-click into the newly extracted folder. You'll find a subfolder here called OPL. Double-click into the OPL folder. You'll find a file in this folder called OPNPS2LD.ELF. Hover over this file, right-click on it, and then select Copy. Navigate to the root of your USB storage device. In this case, it's drive letter G, and I'll pick it from the Quick menu on the left side of the File Explorer window. Paste the OPL file directly onto the root of your USB storage device. Cool, you're done with your USB drive. You can remove it from your computer and close out any instances of File Explorer for the drive if they don't close out automatically when you remove it from your computer. Let's get some games copied over to your hard drive. Insert your SATA hard drive into the USB dock and power on the dock from the power switch on the back. Because this is a USB-based solution for dealing with storage, it assigned the same drive letter, Drive G, that it assigned to the original flash drive. In order to get a better look at things, I'm going to navigate to this PC so that you can see the list of storage devices. Here's Drive G, the hard drive that's connected via USB to the computer. Let's format this drive in XFAT format. Right-click on the drive, select Format from the list of pop-up menu choices, and be sure to select XFAT as the drive format type. Click Start in the bottom right corner, then click OK in the pop-up confirmation message. Once the format is complete, click OK, then click X in the top right corner to close out the format tool. Let's get your content copied over to the newly formatted drive. I've double-clicked on the drive itself, and I'm going to take the File Explorer window with the root of the drive and put it on the right side of the screen. I have some content pre-staged in a folder called Demo on this computer. I'm going to open a File Explorer window for Demo and put it on the left side. For games to work correctly in OPL, you'll need to have them split up by two folders. CD for CD-based games and DVD for DVD-based games. No matter which type of game you want to play, they'll need to be in .iso format. Bring over the backups of your own content to your hard drive and be sure to use the DVD and CD folder structure shown here. 
your work is done on your computer, you can close out any open instances of File Explorer at this point. Insert your USB drive into your PlayStation 2, insert your free MacBook memory card, and power on your system. No matter whether I've purchased a pre-made free MacBook card or built my own, and I have a video on that, I've always seen that they had at least two components on there, ULaunch Elf and OPL. So I'm going to tackle this from the position of deleting the old version of OPL and installing this new updated one. All of that's going to be done through the ULaunch Elf application. So navigate to ULaunch Elf in your framework boot menu and select it with the X button. Inside ULaunch Elf, Circle goes forward in the menus and Triangle goes back. Press Circle to see the list of storage devices for your PS2. From the list of choices, use the D-pad to move the red highlight down to the listing for mass. That's going to be your USB storage. Select it with the circle button. You'll see the listing here for the OPL file that you previously copied over. A quick point here, make note of the exact way that this file is named before moving forward. Use the D-pad to move the red highlight to it, then press the right one button on your controller. This pulls out a side cart menu. You should land right on copy with the arrow. Press circle to select copy. Cool, now that you've got this file copied, press triangle on your controller to go back one level to the list of storage devices. Just like you did before, use the D-pad to move the red highlight through the list of choices, but this time move it all the way to the top to MC0. That's gonna be your free boot card. Press the circle button to select MC0. Use the D-pad to scroll through the list of menu choices until you see the listing for boot. Select boot with the circle button. You should see a listing for a file in here that has the same name as the one on your USB drive. OPNPS2LD.ELF. Take a moment to verify that this file and the file you intend to paste here have the same name. This will ensure that OPL will still load correctly from the main menu of Free Boot. Use the D-pad to move the red highlight down to this file, then press the right one button on your controller. From here, use the D-pad to move the highlight arrow down to delete and select it with the circle button. Then at the confirmation message that appears, press circle to delete the file. Press the right one button on your controller again to activate the side cart menu. This time, use the D-pad to move the highlight arrow down two spaces to get to paste. Select paste with the circle button to paste in the new version of OPL here. Along with installing the new version of OPL, we need to delete out the existing settings for the prior version. Press triangle to go back one listing in the menus. Use the D-pad to move the red highlight down to the OPL folder. Press the right one button on your controller to pull out the side cart menu. Move the highlight arrow down to delete with the D-pad and select it with the circle button. Then at the confirmation prompt that appears, select OK with the circle button. At this point, power off your PlayStation 2 system. Remove the USB drive from the front of the PlayStation 2. It doesn't need it any longer. Then remove the hard drive from the SATA to USB dock. This next step is optional, but I recommend putting some kind of spacer between the hard drive and the PlayStation 2's internal bay. This one's 3D printed, but you could use a simple piece of cardboard to do the trick all the same. Connect the hard drive to the SATA to PS2 adapter board. Then insert the hard drive with the connected adapter into your PlayStation 2. Power on your PS2 to load the Free Boot main menu. From the main menu of Free Boot, use the D-pad to scroll down through the list of choices until you get to OPL. Select it with the X button to launch the new version of OPL. There are two key settings inside OPL that must be changed for things to work correctly. From the main menu of OPL, select Settings with the X button. Use the D-pad to move the highlight down until you get to the listing for BDM Start Mode. Select Off with the X button, then use the D-pad to move down several times until you get to the listing for Auto and select it with the X button. If you don't make this change, OPL will not be able to recognize the games installed on your XFAT formatted hard drive. Next up, use the D-pad to move the highlight down to HDD Device Start Mode. Select it with the X button, and just like you did before, use the D-pad to scroll down several times until you get to Auto, and select Auto with the X button. To lock in these changes, use the D-pad to move the highlight all the way down to the bottom left corner to OK, and select OK with the X button. These changes are locked in, but they are not saved to the configuration. Here's what you need to do. Use the D-pad to move the highlight until you get to Save Changes, and select Save Changes with the X button. Now these changes will be applied every time you restart OPL. Press the circle button to go back to the OPL main menu. A couple of quick notes before we land the plane here. I tested this process on 3.5 inch hard drives, 2.5 inch hard drives, and even SSDs. And in each of these cases, everything worked as expected. Back at the main menu for OPL, press the circle button. This will take you to the games list where you'll have access to both your DVD and CD based games. By the way, if you want to learn how to make your own free make boot card from scratch, this video shown on screen and linked in the description and pinned comment will show you how.